All right, so um, Sarah, we're gonna start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, time in the business, experience, so forth. Awesome, so I am Sarah Mislowski. I'm from north of Atlanta in Gainesville, Georgia. Mm -hmm. I've been licensed for five years, and um, recently, over the past couple of years, I've really nailed down social media, specifically YouTube videos. Yeah. So in 2020, I started um, marketing via YouTube. Yes. And we're going to spend, obviously, a little bit of time on that because that's an area of opportunity for a lot of us. We've been talking about doing video now for several years. And you know we've been slowly introducing it to breakouts and introducing panelists that know video, one-on-one -on -one interviews. And you are absolutely someone that stands out to us as someone that uh, is taking advantage of, of YouTube and, and you know, exposure through video. Now, I know that you've also been coming to our events for a little while, I think probably three years, is that right? Yeah, that's right. And um, you've been a one-on-one -on -one client since 2020. Yes. And you've also taken prospecting boot camp, is that right? Yes. What was that like? Um, well, we'll have to ask Gino how that was like. That was my first coach with Glover U, mm -hmm. and um, that was a very good entrance to the Glover organization. Yeah. Um, it was a very good experience, and you know, coming to events like these and being exposed to other people and other ideas is wildly um, exciting and can push your career to new levels. Yeah. So I think it was in 2020. Y'all yep. had Ken Posick on yep. stage at my first ever Glover U yes. event. And we did a one-on-one -on -one interview with him. Yeah, and so he is really big in the YouTube space and someone that I look up to. Yep. And so that was super exciting, and I just have distinct memories of the agents that I got to learn from yes. at that first uh, summit. Yep, that was in Orlando, that's right. So you've been at it now for five years. Uh, last year, I know you were also leading a brokerage, so production wasn't your only thing because you were leading agents and trying to help them succeed. Uh, last year, you closed seven units as a producer, but you were mostly managing, right? Yes, that's right. And so this year, you're on pace for how many? So this year, um, with myself, a showing agent, and admin, we'll close, um, hopefully we'll hit that 70 units. 70 window. units, yeah. yeah. That's huge, that's huge. I mean, regardless, you know, she said, well, Jeff, I know seven to 70 sounds like ridiculously awesome, but also know that I was leading a brokerage. It doesn't matter. This is your first year back into production to be on pace for 70 units. That's pretty awesome. So you should be proud of that. Okay, so talk to us a little bit about your, your journey with video because I think a lot of people are just naturally intimidated by video or maybe don't know where to start. So take us back to like day one. Where did you start? And you know, let's fast forward from there to today. How, do you, how did you, what was your breakthrough? How did you get into it? So um, you hit the nail on the head. We've all been hearing about videos for many years and that we should implement it in our business, that we should do it. You just gotta get started and try to you know, just get out there and do it. Yeah. So I kept hearing that and I tried. And, and this was in early 2020, 2019. I was making videos and putting them on Facebook about um, how to buy and sell your house and um, interviewing local business owners and highlighting their restaurants and things like that and yep. putting those videos on YouTube. Nobody called me because I highlighted the, the barbecue restaurant in town. Nobody called me to sell their house because of that video. Okay. And um, so I was trying to figure out like how are agents having success with this and um, came across a group of agents and heard Ken speak and, and came across other agents that were having success on YouTube and started looking at the videos they were making and it was all about videos based on their town and the pros and cons of living in that specific area. What it was like buying a home in that area, how much does it cost to live there, why would you live in this area versus another area. None of those agents had videos based upon their local restaurants or businesses in the town. Yeah. And so I saw a distinct difference between what I was doing and what theirs was doing. Um, in, in real estate, we are you know, um, blessed that many of us are, are with brokerages or you know, specifically KW that trains, you know, find a system and a model and follow it. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that if I could just find some other agents that were having success doing it, I just had to follow their system and model. Yep. And so I started, you know, when you hear other people are having success with a strategy, you, you naturally want to go and look and see how they're having that success and, and what their videos look like, because obviously they must have some, something magical that, that they figured out and how to do and how to implement. And when I went and saw the videos that they were doing, because they were, had closings from this, and yep. I went and watched their videos and they weren't that good. <laughs> they, they weren't good on camera. Um, you know, they're, they're, personalities, some were a little bit awkward and the editing wasn't that great. Mm -hmm. And, but to me that was very encouraging. I was yes. like, oh, okay. Like you don't I have to this. have like a high level production team yep. 
that, that maybe Ken has with his organization, um, you don't have to have that level of, of production quality to have success with this. And so that gave me a lot of encouragement to just find that system and model and, and get started and to just do it. Yeah. So from there, from the original videos that got you no results to the ones that are getting you results today, what changed in that journey? What did you, what did, how did you go from not getting results to actually getting results from it? So what changed was making and educating clients that were moving to my area. And if you're like me, whenever I first started uh, thinking about doing this, I did some research to figure out how many people were moving to my town. So I live in Gainesville, Georgia, which is an hour-ish north of Atlanta, kind of a smaller suburb of the northern Atlanta suburbs. Mm -hmm. And in 2020, 20 people a month were searching moving to my town. And when I saw these other agents having success, they were in these huge markets yeah. that they were getting, you know, 10, 20 times that, that traffic of searches. Yeah. So that was a little bit discouraging to me. I was like, there's only 20 people searching? Like, this isn't worth doing this. Right. Um, but then I kind of changed my mindset around that. And I was like, well, I'm not working with 20 clients a month right now. You know, even if I could work with 10 of those people a month that were searching for information about moving to an area, and if I was the only agent making the content and educating these people, surely some of those people are going to reach out to me and use me as their real estate agent. So. Um, that was kind of the, the mindset change shift yeah. that I had there. And then when I saw the other agents that were having success doing this, like I said, they weren't making uh, the content on the businesses. They were making content that people actually needed to know if they were going to be making a move to your town or area, yep. such as why would you choose to live here versus here? What are the differences between the school systems? And you know all the things that you need that local knowledge for someone that is considering making a move. Yeah. So it was whenever I made that shift to making that type of content. And when I made the mindset shift of really taking this seriously. Yeah. So we all come to these great conferences and we hear these great speakers and we get tons of great ideas. But the ideas are nothing if you don't go back and implement those into your business. Yep. And we get really excited when we hear someone introduce something new that sounds fun or exciting to do. And then, at least I'm speaking for myself, I would try this lots of times in, in the business and I would go back and try to implement something and then give up on it in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And like, oh, Common. that's not for Happens me. Normally. Yeah, it, it's, it, that's for them. You know, they had great success with that, but obviously it doesn't work for me. Well, it didn't work for me because I didn't, I wasn't disciplined enough to see it through and to treat it as part of my, you know, lead generation or, or yep. you know, be very, very disciplined about implementing that strategy right so whenever I made the decision to try this YouTube strategy I like had that talk with myself like you're gonna you're gonna go all in on this for three months before you try any other lead gen strategy outside of your database and outside of the normal things that you do and and you're not gonna give up on this you're going to so you, you made the commitment up. no matter what getting results or not you're sticking with it yeah because I wanted to not give up on myself too yep. soon because I had done that in the past which is the number one challenge I think a lot of agents have when they introduce a new lead source. They don't see results in the first month or two, and so it didn't work for them, or I must not be good at this, or whatever. Most of the results, and I'm actually surprised you said three months, because in my experience, most of the results don't show up till month six, seven, eight, or nine. So maybe again, that was me selling myself short, but. Yeah, no, but hey, I'm glad it worked. So uh, was it one video that you did? Like, talk to me about like your first result, your first lead. Was it just one video or was it a culmination of leading up to that? How did you go from not getting results to getting results? I, I understand what you changed in terms of your strategy, but what was like that one video where you started to get results? So the key to this is that you have to post a video every single week religiously. You cannot miss a week. Um, and so that 52 is, weeks a year, 48 weeks a year? What a, 52 weeks a year. Yeah. You, know, you have to teach the YouTube algorithm that you're someone that's going to consistently produce content. And so I knew that going into, you know, committing to Can you repeat strategy. that? What did you just say? You have to teach the algorithm that you're what? You have to teach the algorithm that you're someone that they can count on to consistently produce content. So, so YouTube so. needs to know that Sarah is producing a video every week. Like yes, they can so start to count Sunday on Every at 6 o'clock, a video is going up on my channel. Mm -hmm. And so that encourages YouTube to continually put my content out in front of other people. Yep. Um, so knowing that I had to do that, um, going into to implementing the strategy, whenever you, anytime you put something out on social media, you want kind of like that instant validation that what you're doing is working or people are seeing it and people are watching. Yep. And so those first couple of videos that I put out, I would almost religiously every single day go and check and watch the view count to see how many people had, had viewed the, the channel uh -huh. or the video. And it would go from like three views to eight, 
to nine. <laughs> and then a few weeks later, it's like still only 15 people had watched the video. Uh -huh. And that was very discouraging. I was like, what am I doing this for? This yeah. is, it's not easy to do. And, Correct. and who's, who's watching this? But I'd made that Uncomfortable, commitment. no one's watching it. What am I doing? Yep. Right, and I made that commitment to myself that I was gonna keep going. And so it was after a couple of weeks of posting videos and just seeing the, those view counts just like inch along, mm -hmm. um, it was a Saturday afternoon and I got a phone call from a number that I didn't recognize. And you know, I just assumed that it was a spam call or you know, um, car warranty calling me. Yeah. And so I answered it <laughs> and it was a guy from Texas saying, hey Sarah, you know, do you have time to talk? You know, we're, we're thinking about taking a job in, in Gainesville and you know, we watched all our YouTube videos and would love to talk to you about moving there. Yep. And inside y'all, I was dying because I was so excited mm -hmm. that this was my first call ever, you yeah. know, and it's like instantly I forgot how to have like a buyer console yep. or ask questions. <laughs> and also I just wanted to like put them on hold for a second so I could go run and scream and then come back. And yeah. So I um, had that phone call and... Do you remember what video it was that prompted that call? Yeah, so here's the unique and, and weird thing about making content. You're never going to know what video specifically resonates with, with people. Obviously you can yeah. go back in and look at the data and you're gonna have video topics that are more popular than others. But almost every person that calls will say, hey, we've watched all of your videos. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, all of them? Because right now there's like yeah. 200 out They there. use that language. Oh yeah, we watch all your videos. But people will really sit there and binge watch your content once you build up this library of content. And so they really feel like they know you, which is also uh, an amazing byproduct of, of generating conversion. leads. The conversion goes yeah. up substantially. The conversion is, is substantially higher. It's, it's unlike any other lead source when someone's cold calling or calling you out yeah. of the blue because they already know you and, and they've watched so much of your content, they're also a much better educated lead. Yeah. Um, but at that time, I only had a couple of videos out and those videos weren't that good either. So it was, you know, I was fumbling my way trying to figure out how to, how to make videos and how to do this. And really y'all, the only thing I was doing was just finding other agents that were doing this well and copying what they were doing. Yeah. I would just take their idea and just put my, my in your name market. In the city. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and change it and, and so make emulating it people that were doing what you wanted to be doing. Uh, following the system and the model. Yep. Um, so that, that first phone call gave me the inspiration to keep going. And I was like, okay, something's working. Even though those views are still really low, my subscribers were probably like in the single digits at that time mm -hmm. that I had that first phone call. It gave me a lot of inspiration to keep going that I was onto something. I love that. Uh, talk to me about your, your copy content formula that you use. Yeah, so um, we have found that learning from other agents that were successful in this is that you really have to be education based whenever you're making content on the, on this type of subject and you're helping people on YouTube. And so we really kind of rotate through four different topics every single month so that we are um, never making two videos that are similar back to back. And it, another good important thing that I've learned throughout this process is that YouTube has to kind of, uh, the algorithm itself needs time for a video to breathe and to let YouTube figure out what the video is about and who's watching the video so that they can put it in front of more people. Um, so we rotate through four different topics but they're all pretty much education based around the cities that we are mm -hmm. in. And um, you know, as you do this over time, you're gonna get more and more people that reach out to you and ask you questions. Yeah. And so all of those questions, I'm like, oh, that's the next video that we need to make a, a yep. con, you know, make a video on. Yes. And so um, the, the most important thing to know is this, that you are educating someone about what it's like to live in your area and you're very honest and, and personal with them as well. They don't want you to sound like a news anchor. They don't want you to sound like you're reading a book report. You know, you're giving experiences and telling stories about what it's like, you know, with current clients that you're working with or that you have helped and you're connecting with them and you're telling them about your family so that they get to know you. Yeah. And One of the things I just heard in that is um, you essentially want to get to a point to where every question a buyer or seller has, not only do you have the answer to it, but it's on video. Here's the answer, here's the link, right? So you're, you're taking into consideration the questions that you get on appointments, over the phone, in a buyer consultation, whatever, and you're making mental notes of them, or when you get in your car, you're making a note of them, and you're just going back and creating a video around that. Yeah. Now, do you start off the video with, here's a question I get often, and here's the answer to it? Like, how does it go from a consumer's question that you're answering to the video? What does that look like? So 
you know, recently we came across a house that had um, polybutylene piping, and that is something that what is that polybutylene piping? It's a it's a Must pipe be something in the south. It is. It's a type of <laughs> piping that was put in homes <laughs> in the 1990s, 1980s, 1990s, okay. and um, it, it's it causes pipe leaks. Anyways, so it came up in a house, and it was something to me that locally we know this is knowledge, but it had never occurred to me that hey, this is something that I need to. Uh, tell potential buyers about as they're moving here because it came up with someone that was relocating from out of state and they're like, what is this? And I'm like, oh, they don't know what this is. Yeah. So I'm like, what are other things that they don't know about that's yep. unique to a house here in Georgia? So then we came up with four other things that are unique to a Georgia home. So it's five things you need to know about before buying a house or yep. five dangers, you know, when buying a house in Georgia. And that was the video. Yeah. Um, Which but, by the way, that alone, we teach in the copywriting formula, uh, how, how to write copy that gets people to stop and watch. Yes. Right? And that's yes. when, so you use, kind of like when you use alarming language or... like that, when you kind of sensi sensationalize it a bit, that causes people to want to see what's going on, right? Yeah, so a unique thing happened recently. I was um, had a consult with some a couple that came into town and the husband and wife were sitting there and the husband asked a question. And before I could even answer the question, the wife said, Billy, she, she answered that question in the last episode that she did. Didn't you watch it? <laughs> and I was like, dang, okay. <laughs> well, one, it caught me off guard when they referred to it as an episode. I was like, oh, I have episodes. All right. Um, <laughs> so. so what would you say, there's gotta be, you know, all the hype about video, there's gotta be like one, one or two downsides. Like what's the, what's the, what's the one thing that I, I might not look forward to if I start having success with video? Yeah, so the most, um, Obvious downside, whenever you're making content, helping people relocate to an area, you are targeting buyers. Mm. So, you know, in this business we hear, you know, you need to list to last. Yep. Well, my business is almost 75% buyers. And especially over the past couple of years, um, you know, this market hasn't been the easiest for buyers to, you know, obtain housing in yep. right now. So that added kind of like an extra layer of difficulty to this. It was a blessing and a curse. You know, we had really great buyers wanting to relocate, but it was hard to find them houses. So a lot of extra you know, legwork on the, on the ground, but the flip side to this is that I'm building an amazing future database of clients that I'm, that I'm putting into my database right now. Yeah. And so in five years, you know, these buyers well, are gonna become sell. sellers and they're gonna yeah. have to sell or their needs are gonna change and they may have to relocate. Yep. Another downside is that even though a lot of people connect with you on video, and feel like they really, really know you and they like you, mm -hmm. sometimes equally you get those people that don't really treat you that way and it's just like, they just see it as very transactional and sometimes it's incredibly difficult to connect with them because you're not working with someone from your database or your sphere that knows you that you already have a previous relationship with. These are often, I mean, these are always strangers that you're yep. working with. So sometimes you can attract some difficult people that you're working with as yep. well. So I'm sure one of the questions that go, that's going through the minds of our audience uh, is, so do you just have like a video crew follow you around or you just have one day that you shoot, somebody else holds the camera, like just you know, give us like 30 seconds or less on what that experience looks like for you weekly. So I shoot videos talking head style, meaning that I'm just talking to the camera and then we lay over B-roll on top of that. Um, I recently tried pivoting towards um, doing it on location style, which if you're familiar with Kim Posick and his channel, his is all on location with a videographer. What I found was that was way more labor and time intensive and more expensive, um, mm -hmm. and I just couldn't spend that much time. So somebody's got to go meet you out there, you're paying for them to be right, there. Right, you got to yep. weather and locations and driving yep. and all that kind of good stuff. Whereas right now, I normally film my videos every, not every Sunday, but one or two Sundays a month, and I'm filming two or three videos at a time and I'm spending about an hour filming those videos. So okay. I, my time investment in this is usually two hours a month. Um, I've grown to the point where I'm a little bit leveraged now where I have an assistant that really helps with a lot of the research on the videos and, and we yeah. mastermind around the scripts and she outlines what that video is going to look like and talking points. And then my job is really just to film it and she handles uh, the communication with the editor and the posting of the video. Awesome. So a couple hours a month, you shoot three or four at a time, and then you launch them every Sunday at 6. Why Sunday at 6? Sorry, I know I said that was my last question, but this is my final question. Why Sunday at 6 p.m.? Sunday at 6 does not matter at all. You could post Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock. It was just the day and time that I picked, mm -hmm. and that just became our day and time. Got so it. 
Um, I knew that that would give me all week long up until Friday to, <laughs> to do any last minute editing if we needed to yep. um, to get a video out that week. So that's why I picked that day. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you.